like for a long time, um, you know, I was wondering why did you create me? And especially prior to me getting saved, uh, when I lived a life that was promiscuous, uh, when I was living a life that was full of, uh, you know, partying and, and, you know, and things like that, you know, and involved in gangs and drugs, you know, so, so I definitely, uh, you know, was wondering, like, why was, why was I even created, you know? Why am I here, you know? And, but then after I got saved, you know, God really started really dealing with me about why was I made. So, so I want to make sure you know that you were made for a mission. If I can get 25, 30 minutes of your time right now, I want to just discuss being made for a mission. Everyone was made for a mission, and it, we need to learn to break the silence. And so in preparing for Easter, I want everyone to know we need to break the silence. We need to begin to start opening up our mouth. About what? About the wonders of God. Uh, you know, there's a sin called silence. And so there's a scene called silence, and I want to explain to you because in the garden, uh, when God created human beings first, it was Adam and Eve, uh, you know, and Adam and Eve, they were hanging out, and, and God actually told Adam, look, do not eat from this certain tree. Do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what Scripture says in Genesis. And so he told Adam, so Adam knew. I'm not supposed to eat from this tree. And so then he actually uh, received a wife named Eve, and Eve, either she didn't know because Adam, her husband, didn't pass the information along, which that's a whole other topic, you know, but the, the husband was supposed to pass the information along or the man in the house was supposed to pass the information along. He didn't pass that information. Why? Because the serpent slithered into their household, and, and when he slithered in, you know what? She was confused and said, well, I, you know, um, I guess we don't supposed to touch it or eat it. And no matter what, she was confused. And in this conversation, she actually uh, did something she had no business doing, and she ate of the fruit. And this is the part that really blows my mind. She ate the fruit, Bible says, and then she gave it to her husband who was with her. So that means he was right there watching everything. Sin of silence. So we need to learn how to break the silence. We need to stop. Now, there's a sin of talking too much, too. We know that, right? But, you know, but there's a sin of silence, and so we need to break the silence. We need to break the silence. Why? Because we were made for a mission. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, I want you to get this. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, it says this. This is very important scripture. I want you to get this. It talks about like how we were created. Now, if I can get a little help here, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5, verse 6, it says, work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Now, I remember when coming up and learning in Bible college and, and, and when I was being trained, when the word ministry came along, when people heard the word ministry, it was like taboo. Like ministry meant, ooh, quit your job and start preaching every day. I don't think that's smart. You know, you better pay them bills. You know, everybody, you know, got a ministry, though. And when you heard full-time ministry, you thought full-time ministry mean, meant a pastor, and that's not true. Every calling has a message, but every calling don't have a pulpit. See, I may have work from the pulpit, but it's the same message, the good news. It says, work at telling others the good news. So you're supposed to be telling, we're all in full-time ministry then, because we all supposed to be fully engaged and giving ourselves over to carrying out the ministry God gave us. Meaning, if you're at the hair salon, you should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. If you are at the corner store, the market, you should be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Dropping your kid off at school, you see someone, they're in need, you share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's very important for us to get that, that we were made for a mission. What is that mission? To share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel? It's very simple. It is so simple. Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus rose for you and I. Simple. It is, you don't have to make it complex. Jesus lived, right? Jesus died, Jesus rose. 
for you and I. Do you believe that? And, see, and, and it's very simple. You know, Acts says it like this. It makes it a lot clearer. Acts chapter 20 says it clear. I love this verse, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Look what it says. Help me out. It says that I don't care about my own life. He says, I'm not even caught up in my own, my own self. I'm not consumed with what's going on with me. The most important thing that I complete, he said, the most important thing is that I complete my mission. He understood his mission. He took ownership of his mission. He wasn't saying they mission, the church's mission, the pastor's mission. He says, my mission. He took it personal. It wasn't someone else's mission. It was my mission. He says that the Lord Jesus gave me. Here's the big thing is we need to engage with Jesus in such a way that he gives us something. When we get out of prayer, we need to make an exchange. I'm going to give you my hurt and you give me your healing. I'm going to give you my pain and you give me your purpose. You know, I'm going to constantly be just giving you something and you give me something. And this is very important. He gave him a mission. We need to be able to get before God and find out, why did you create me? What is my mission? And then he makes it clear to tell people the good news about God's grace. God has expectations out of you and I. God has has expectations for me, and God has expectations for you. Let me tell you one thing that God expects. God expects me to bring people to Jesus. That's just what he expects. God has expectations of every human being. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus, you know, comes into your life. He's expecting for you to bring others to Jesus. It's so important for us to get that, that God is expecting this out of us. And we just heard that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, right? He says, work at telling others the good news. He tells us, here's what he's expecting. He's expecting you to work. He's expecting you to tell others about the good news. He's telling you, he's telling you that I'm expecting you to fully carry out the ministry I gave you. So important to get plugged in with the Lord to find out what God created you for. He made you for mission. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. I love this verse. It says, when I am with those who are weak, I share their weaknesses. For I want to bring the weak, here it is, to Christ. He says, I understand what God expects out of me. God expects me to bring others to Christ. He says, and matter of fact, I'm going to enter into people's weaknesses. I'm going to enter into people's hurts. I'm going to enter in just so I can help them come to Christ. Just so I can help bring them to Christ. So I'm going to be able to relate to them. They're going to be able to relate to me. Have you ever seen someone going through something and you act like you just put your nose up all bougie-fied and stuff? No, you, you know what I'm talking about. You start acting like as if you, your faith don't ever fail you. It's kind of disturbing and it's really degrading because God says that that's not how it works. You enter into people's pain. You enter into people's hurts. You don't look down on them. You enter into it. Why do you enter into it? So you can feel what they feel. So your prayer will be that much passion. It will be more understanding. And he says, and, and what, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm going to bring him to Christ because I know that's what he expects out of me. He said, yes, I find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save some. Now it seems like people are trying to find differences with others so much. It seems like people are trying to pick fights, no? Social media, anything. You post something, somebody's going to pick that thing apart. You not post nothing that's like just, you know, if it's even borderline controversial, you, you'll have more comments than you never had. 220,000 comments on <laughs> just this one post. Because, you know, people are trying to look for something to dis- disagree with. He said, look what Paul says. The apostle Paul says, I don't look for things that disagree with people. I actually find common ground with people so I can enter there and I can lead them to Christ. Because I know God expects me to bring people to Christ. And see, if you understand that God expects you to bring people to Christ, you won't always be conflicting with others. You'll be trying to find common ground so you can bring them to Christ. Because people aren't going to be coming to Christ if you're always arguing with them. 
Nobody's going to come to Christ. You, you know, you always combative, arguing, disagreeing, talking crazy. The reality is Paul says that he wants to make sure that he finds a common ground. I think that we can take a page out of Paul's book, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and say, you know what, I think I need to find common ground so I can help people come to Christ. God expects things out of us. God expects us to bring people to Jesus. Another thing God expects, God expects us to go to people for Jesus. See, bringing people to Jesus is one thing. Bringing people, somebody may come into your pathway so you bring them to Jesus. They may come across your path. They may come your way, and when they pass by you, you bring them to Jesus. But going to people for Jesus means you're going out of your way, meaning sometimes you don't want to. You tired. I don't want to go over there. But you know what God expects out of you. You know God expects you to reach people. You know God expects you to bring people to Jesus. Not only bring people to Jesus, God expects you to go to people for Jesus. Mark chapter 15, verse 16 says it like this. Excuse me, 16 verse 15 says it like this. Look what it says. It says, go. This is what Jesus tells his followers. Anybody a follower of Jesus? Okay, so anybody that follow Jesus in here? Yeah. Online, okay, just put an emoji with your hand up if you're a follower of Jesus. Okay, now, this is what he's saying to us. Go. He didn't say sit. He didn't say stay. He didn't say yield. It's a green light. It's not a red light. It's not a yellow light. It's a green light. Two-letter words, so different. Go. He says, go everywhere in the world. Some people say, I don't even have bus fare. He says, well, well, gas is expensive. Well, just go into your world. Well, I don't have a passport. You don't have to go to China. He says, go everywhere in the world. You know what your world is. You got a world that you travel in every day. You go to that store. You go to that job. You go every day, it, we pretty much take the same route, and we see almost the same people. But Jesus is saying, when you go in your world, tell the good news to everyone. It's like when you're traveling, you're moving around, as you're, you're walking around, tell people about Jesus. Tell people about the good news. So the key word is go. Go. And sometimes that's getting out of your comfort zone, right? He says, go. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 makes it even clearer. He says, and you will be my witnesses. Matter of fact, before this B, this is the, the latter part of verse 8, but the first part of verse 8 says, when the, the Holy Spirit comes up on you, you shall receive power. Right? And he's saying, you receive power, and he says, and you will be my witness. It never says, you receive power so you can overcome your mental anguish. You can, see, you can receive power so you can have self-care and you can take care of yourself. And you can make sure yourself is okay. And you can start manifesting stuff. You don't say none of that. You know what the number one reason why we receive power? Is that you shall receive power so you can witness to other people. He says, because I made you for a mission. I made you so you can go out and bring others to Jesus Christ. He says, and guess what? He says, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. He says, no matter where you go, you need to be my witness. What is a witness? A witness, you tell what you've seen, what you heard, and what you experienced. You tell people what you've seen God do. You, you tell what you heard about God or what God said to you, and you tell what you experienced with God. And anybody experienced anything with God before? Anybody ever experienced something in worship you experienced and, and tears start rolling up your cheeks? Go run and tell that. Go run and tell that. Have you ever been praying and God's presence just come up on you and he starts speaking to you? Anybody experienced that? Ha have you ever opened up your Bible and God says something to you, right? When God speaks to you, he's saying, I'm speaking to you so you can go run and tell that. Go to people and bring them to Jesus through being a witness, through sharing what you've experienced. 
through sharing what you heard, through sharing what you've seen. Have you seen God do some wonders? Haven't you seen God do some miraculous things? He says, I'm expecting you to do a particular thing. What is that? Witness. I'm expecting you to bring people to Christ. I'm expecting you to go to people for Jesus. We need to break the silence. And the reason why I want to share about breaking the silence is because it's time for us to go and go run and tell everything that we experienced with Jesus or the things that we've experienced with Jesus. And it's time to go run and tell people, others, what we've seen and what we heard from Jesus. It's time to go run and tell it. It's time to break the silence. And I'm, I'm going to share a quote with you. It says, it's not the words of an enemy that hurts me, but it's the silence of someone who says they love me. When we say we love someone and we don't go and we're silent about the gospel of Jesus Christ, he said, it's not the words of my enemy that hurt me, but it's the words of those who say they love me, but are silent about the gospel. They're they're silent about sharing the good news. What should be our motivation? Well, one of the motivations we should have, we should have the motivation of man's reality. We witness, we testify, we share, number one. We do this because of man's reality, okay? Because of mankind's reality, okay? It's very important for us to know that mankind's reality is, is very, very, very grim. It's very grim. So so we do this because of mankind's reality. Think about it. Mankind is doomed without Jesus Christ. We're doomed. Without Jesus, people go to hell. Without us sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, people go to hell. To hell. That's why that quote is so important. It's not the words of an enemy that hurts me, but it's the silence of someone who says they love me. That's why that quote is so special because if I say I love someone, I can't be silent about the gospel with them. If I say I love them, I care for them, there's no way. I should be silent about the gospel. There's no way I can be laughing and joking and say, yeah, girl, I really love you, but I haven't shared the gospel with you. It's so important that we share the gospel. It's so important that you and I share the good news. It's so important that we tell others about Jesus Christ because we were created for this. We were made for this mission. God created us to share his good news. It's so important that we would get this because the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, yes, all of us have sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious ideal. We all fall short. We all miss the mark. We all go into hell. We don't have Jesus. You know what we're saying? When we don't witness to someone about Jesus, we're saying, go to hell, brother. Go to hell, Jesus. I'm not telling you, Jesus, I'm not doing what you told me to do, Jesus. Go to hell, sister-in-law. Go to hell, cousin. Go to hell, son. Go to hell, daughter. Because I'm not telling you about Jesus. We're shaking our fist in Jesus' face and saying, I'm not sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 24 in Romans chapter 3, first it tells us we all fall short, but look what it says, yet now God declares us not guilty. Somebody say not guilty. guilty. That's beautiful. So so you're going to have somebody run around thinking that they're guilty of a particular thing when Jesus has already said they're not guilty. I mean, how many of us have walked around, you know, in guilt and in shame, and we don't have to? And so if we've done that and finally God has given us understanding, that oh, my God, I don't have to feel that way no more. After Jesus came to my life, I don't have to feel that way no more. Anybody experienced that before with Jesus? Anybody experienced that? Have anybody experienced that, you know what, that I don't have to be ashamed no more. I don't have to be in mental anguish. I don't have to feel all discouraged. I don't have to feel depressed no more. I don't have to beat myself down. I don't have to be condemned. Anybody? Nobody? Anybody? Like after Jesus comes in your life, you're like, man, I, I don't have to feel that way no more. 
I don't have to feel, you know, overwhelmed no more. Thank you, Jesus, right? How many more people need to know this, though? How many more people just walk around with their head between their legs, their tail between their legs? How many people walk around dragging their knuckles on the pavement? How many other people, you know, overwhelmed with guilt and shame and sorrow in their past? And if we don't share it in a condescending way as if we're better than them, we're only sharing this because Jesus has done something in our life. And we know the answer is who? Jesus. So look, it says, yet now God declares us not guilty of offending him if, he, if we trust in Jesus Christ. And that's simple. You can trust in Jesus. It's just a decision. And so it's so important for each and every last one of us to understand that mankind's reality is one of our motivations. It should be our motivation of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, sharing the good news with others, because we know mankind's reality is this. If we do not accept Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, if a person doesn't accept Jesus, they're going to hell. And I want to just tell you something. Hell is a lot longer than these little, even these little 20 and 50 and 70. You know how some of them say, ooh, I'm old. These ankles are hurting. I'm 50. My ankles just hurting now. <laughs> well, think about eternity in fire. I think I'll take these ankles any day. It's bad back, right? Anybody, anybody start feeling like they're old? And we haven't been on earth. We, we, you know, we can live for 120 years, and that's not as long as being in eternity. In eternal hell, we got the message that can change the entire world. It's that only if someone can just trust in Jesus, who is his kindness. In his kindness, he freely takes away our sins. Like, some people make it so difficult. It's not difficult to accept Jesus. Just trust him. Can we do that? Yeah. Trust him. I, man, there's so many people made it so hard when I was coming up to become a Christian. It's, like, it's not hard. The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. There it is. You're saved. See? See? I knew some of us, we, we don't believe that. Nobody won't say amen. <laughs> you know what I'm it's that simple. See? Trust in your heart. I'm saying the Bible says, confess with your mouth and trust in your heart and you shall be saved. That's it. That's it. It's basic. It's basic. It's very simple. That's one of our motivations. That's the reason why we want to share the good news is because mankind's reality. Also, we want to share the good news because, you know, we have authority. The second thing is we have authority. All of us have authority to be able to do that. There is not one person that don't have authority in here. Once you accept Jesus Christ, number two is simple. It says we've been given authority. Everyone in here has been given authority. And so you don't have to be afraid. Some of us feel afraid. You know, we feel intimidated to share our faith. But you don't have to be intimidated. You don't have to be intimidated. Some of us, we're shy, right? Some of us say we're shy. I'd be like, how you get all them kids? You got five kids. You got five kids. But you shy? How'd that happen? Four and five baby daddies and baby mamas, you ain't shy. Ain't no, <laughs> you just got your own message. Jesus want to give you a message, okay? You got your own message. Are y'all seeing that or not? But we got authority. Somebody say, I got authority. authority. I'm telling you, Jesus has given us all authority to be able to communicate the word of God. You don't have to be intimidated. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be shy. Because you can go share the good news right now with someone. You got the authority to communicate that. I want you to get this in Matthew chapter 28. It says this. Matthew chapter 28 makes it so simple in verse 18. Watch what it says. It makes it simple. You know, because he's telling you, he says, all authority. Jesus came to him and said, all authority has been given to me. All the authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Verse 19 says, watch this. He says, now, you know what I'm saying, therefore, you go and make disciples. So if all authority has been given to Jesus, then Jesus is going to tell you to do something. You got authority too. Now you got all authority because he's telling you to go do it. He says, go baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And, you know, and look what it says in teaching them. In verse 20, it says, teaching them all that I have commanded you. And he says, man, I'll be with you. The Bible said, I'll be with you. 
that's so important to know that, that Jesus is going to be with you. You got authority. You don't have to be intimidated. You don't have to be afraid. You can share the good news. I remember there was a time when I was in the neighborhood and, and uh, I was passing out flyers. I was actually in Denton, Texas, and I used to live in Denton, Texas, and I, and I was on this certain street, and, and I seen a couple guys I used to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I used to hang out with in the 90s. Y'all know how the 90s was, right? Come on now, don't judge, but you know. It, everything just fly up under the boundary. It was the 90s, man. Come on, man. In the 90s, we just did whatever. You know what I'm saying? You know, come on. It was, it was the 90s. You know I mean? Do you remember the music in the 90s? Come on now. The best music ever. And so I seen the guys, and so, so I had this shirt on that said, Addicted for Jesus. So I gave myself up, right? So I seen them. I was like, whoa. I was about to turn back around just, and, and take my crew and say, man, we can go back this way, you know? And then they said, hey, and they called me by my street name. I said, God, dog. I said, hey, I turned around. I turned around. I had my shirt on, addicted to Jesus. And they said, hey, man, wow. I heard, man, from your family, man, that you preaching and stuff now, man. He says, wow, man, I'm, I'm, man, I'm proud of you. They put their hand on my shoulder. Man, I'm proud of you, man. Man, that's good. And so I was intimidated to share with them because of, you know, our past. But automatically, some people want to hear the gospel. Let them all to Jesus. Prayed all for him that day, right there on the block, right there at the trap. You know what I'm saying? Told him, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, Jesus got a wonderful plan for their life. But guess what? We don't have to be intimidated. We got all authority. Yeah. And you would really be surprised how many people would accept Jesus if you only offered him to him. You would be surprised how many people would accept your prayer if you would just offer it to him. We have to offer Jesus. Remember, God is expecting us to bring others to Jesus, and God is expecting us to go to people for Jesus. And one of the things we got to get, our motivation should be because the world is very bad off because mankind's reality is grim, and also because we got authority. That should be our motivation. I got authority. Somebody say, I got authority. Man, I got authority. I came here for this. I was built for this. God made me for this. This is why I exist, is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Now I start walking in the room, giving God glory, not, not in a boastful way or prideful way, but I bust through doors. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be in here. I own this thing. What are you doing? What are you thinking? I don't care if you're a billionaire, a millionaire. This is why I can't. I got authority. You don't do it out of pride. You do it because who's with you? He says, lo and behold, I'll be with you. It's not about you. It's about who's with you. I brought God up in here with me. So guess what? Who could really be against me? Who can really overcome me? I got authority. Why? Because God's with me. That should be our motivation. Another reason why we should have a motivation is because we do this because it's our responsibility. Not only is it mankind's reality, it should push us and drive us because the reality is if someone don't accept Jesus, they're going to hell. But also, you know, because we got the authority, we got God living inside of us. But secondly, because this is our, I mean, thirdly, it's because our responsibility. We do it because it's our responsibility. Who's going to do it if we don't do it? Remember, it's very simple. If Christians don't do it, who's going to do it? The quote is simple. It says, it's not the words of an enemy that hurts you. But it's the silence of those who say they love you. If I say I love you, I shouldn't be silent about this good news that God has given me. We have a responsibility. As I close up, I want to give you this. In Luke, it says it like this. Luke chapter 14, I believe, it says it like this. It, it says it like this. Luke tells us that much obtained, Luke chapter 12, verse 40, it says much is required from those whom much is given. So if God has given you a lot, God is requiring out of a lot from you. For their, is, for their responsibility is greater. How many of us have received a whole bunch of forgiveness? Woo! Whole bunch of forgiveness. Anybody? A few? A few people? Oh, you didn't mess up over and over and over and over again. God's like, oh, it's all right. I got you. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, 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 it's, it's good, it's good, you know, it's all right, it's all right. Well, I know I, I, I can lift up my hand. So much is required from those who have, whom much has been given. 
Have you been given a lot? Have, have it been a lot of patience given your way? God waiting on you to get it right, right? So if there's a lot of patience given, there's a lot of patience required out of you. Much obtained, much required. Much given, much required. He says, for their responsibility is greater. This is our responsibility. Psalm say it like this. Psalm says this. It says, you know what? Send us around the world. This, this should be our heart. Send us around the world with the news of your saving power. Send me. I'll go. And I'll tell everybody about the eternal plan that you have for mankind. I'll do it. That's what God is looking for. God is just looking for somebody that's willing to go. Because actually he expects you to bring people to Jesus. He expects you to go to people for Jesus. This is what he expects out of us. But he's just looking for a few good people. Often God will have me traveling, you know, going out of the country, things like that. And so sometimes you'll go to an airport where you just don't know where you're going. So when I go to an airport and I don't know where I'm going, I don't know where the gate is, I don't know exactly where the airline is I'm traveling on, I'll go to someone that actually works with the airport. And how I know they work for the airport is because they have, you know, uniform on. And that uniform tells me that they work with the airport. So I'll come up to them and i say, excuse me, um, can you tell me where gate such and such is? Can you tell me where American Airlines is or wh- whoever I'm traveling with? And they'll point me towards my destination that's going to get me to my proper destination. They'll give me direction. They'll, they'll point me in a certain direction that's going to get me to my proper destination. And that's all God is do- asking us. God is asking us to point people in the right direction so we can get them to their proper destination. And, and you say, well, well how, you know, because we work for Jesus. We work for Jesus. Just like that, you know, the person that works for the airline and they, you know they work for Jesus because of the outfit they got on, right? Their gear, their uniform. He said, well, how people know I work for Jesus? Well, how many people been just pouring out their little heart to you? Because they've seen you handle things a little differently than everybody. That's your uniform. You handle, you know, pressure a little differently. You're a little bit more patient than others. You forgive a little bit more than others. And, and so they've seen that. That's your uniform. So they've drawn to you to get direction so they can be laid in the proper destination. Are you getting this? But, but here it is. A lot of times when people come to us, we start giving them the wrong information. We start giving them all kind of stuff. Well, I read this book. Well, girl, you need to look up on YouTube. Well, you know who you really need to listen to, my pastor? No, no, no. You give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. That's why they came to you. They came to you because... You didn't know it, but they, you got their uniform on. Just like I'm looking for somebody with a uniform on at the airport to point me in the right direction so I can get to my proper destination. You got the uniform of Christ on. And they ask you, they think that you're going to point them in the right direction in life so they can get to their proper destination. They really think that. You've been entrusted with a responsibility. You were made for this mission. God created you for this very purpose. Usually when guys like another, you know, person, typically a girl, they'll go over and they'll break the silence. They'll open up their mouth and tell them what their interest is. Girl, I like you. See, it's been a while. It's been a while. I'm I'm off the market. I ain't been in the game 15 years, so I don't know what. I don't, I don't know what they say now. Please forgive me. I, I don't know what they talking about now. So forgive me if my game is a little whack. But, but they'll, they'll open, they'll, they'll break the silence, and they'll tell them what's on their heart. They'll tell them what their motivation is. They'll tell them what their interest is. And no matter, they're looking for a response now. A man comes and tells a lady that, Whatever's on their heart, because they're looking for a response. But no matter the response, if she say, yeah, you nay, if she say, I don't like you, you know, I don't want no parts of you, or she say, I was waiting for you to say that. No matter what, man can walk away with no regrets now. Because he, he don't have to walk away and say, dang, I wish I would have hollered at her, man. 
Hey, what would have happened if I would have asked her for a number? I would have slid up in her DMs. <laughs> what would have happened? Well, I'll never know because I didn't do it. And one of the things that's so important nowadays is for us to, no matter what other people's response is, it's not your job to determine what their response is going to be. It's your job to break the silence. It's your job to make sure that you open up your mouth. It's your job to tell them about Jesus Christ. It's not your job to dictate what their response is. Some people might say, man, I don't believe in Jesus and I don't want to, and you can't convince me. But at least when you walk away, you can walk away with no regrets. I did what God called me to do. I broke the silence. I told him about Jesus. I shared the good news. I told him about the wonders of God's grace. I told him how I experienced Jesus. I told him how I heard God. I told him how I have listened to God's word and changed me. I seen some things with the, these eyes that God done that no one else could do. I told him about it. I can walk away with no regrets. Something about regret. They, they, you know what they tell us? They tell us that regret is like cancer. Regret is what termite is to wood. Regret is to our soul. Termites eat wood up on the inside. Regret eats you up on the inside. You look good on the outside. Have you ever seen a piece of wood and it look good on the outside? But on the inside, it's hollow. That's what regret do to a person. Because you wish you would have done a particular thing. But you can't get that back. That's why I really urge you to break the silence and start sharing the good news. You got some motivations now. Because of mankind's reality, because you got the authority, and because ultimately it's really your responsibility. I want you, I'm going I'm to leave you with this as we close up. It's not the words of an enemy that hurts you and I. It's the silence of those who say they love you. And if you love a person, because we are called to love people, and because we love people, we share the good news. We tell someone about Jesus. So well, I don't know how to share the good news. Bring them to this church. I'll share it with them. Bring them here. I, I'll share the gospel. I want to pray for you to commission you to have you go out and understand your responsibility and what God has called you to do. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to pray for everyone in the name of Jesus. Then we got a surprise coming up at the end of the service. It's, it's going to be fun. Pastor Tim is going to lead us in officiating a wedding up in here. My Lord. That's good. That's good. Father, I pray for every soul, every heart, every mind, every human being here in this room and online, God. I pray that you would refresh every soul. Build up every individual, Lord God. Encourage us to know and get a deep revelation of mankind's reality. Help us step into the sickness of being lost. Remember where you found us, said Jesus. I remember you found me an addict, suicidal, jumping out of windows, crazy, deranged, murderous, scandalous. Lord, and without Christ, Lord, there's people that may not be where I was at, but we would all be in the same place without Christ. We would all be going to hell. Help us to have a personal insight on that. Help us to have a personal insight that you got authority. God rests upon you. God rests up in you. God lives through you. If you allow him to, you have authority. God, I pray that every person here would understand that it is our responsibility. God, you expect us to bring people to Christ, to go to people for you, Jesus. So Lord, I, Lord, I commission every person here for them to go and preach the good news. For them to go and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. For them to go and experience the power of God released through their life to impact other people, to change their destination, to point them in the right direction so they can 
get to the proper destination that you have for them, God. So I pray for every person here that we would be used this week. We would be used in a mighty way to share with our friends, with our loved ones, with our co-workers, with our neighbors, with everyone that we can come in contact with, that we would share that Jesus lived, that Jesus died, and Jesus rose on the third day for salvation of all of the world. If we could just trust him today, that we can be saved from the penalty of sin and that's hell. Lord, I pray for these people to go share that message with everyone they come in contact with. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.